So, how are you doing this week? Pretty good. I hear you've procured a new domicile. Yes, I have got a new place ready to go. It's sitting in Shermer, Illinois right now. That's exciting. And uh, it's 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 got a microwave and an entertainment center. And that's it. Does it have like a toilet and a shower? Well, yeah, it's got those too, but I didn't buy those. Those came free. Okay. Those are pretty important. Those they gave me those for free. Ooh. It's it's a nice little place. Like I said, the the new uh, studio is about just about as big as this one. I think a little bigger actually. So that'll be nice. And uh, I've got to, just got to get everything in and situated and set up, and we'll see how we can get that to work. They're telling me Linkara named a hippo after me. He did what? Linkara named a hippopotamus after Terra. The Pokemon. Is that are they, true? Are they talking about Pokemon? I don't know. Are you talking about Pokemon? You people talking about... Why are you talking about Pokemon? I don't know Pokemon. My nephew has Pokemon cards. Get your Pokemon out of me. He came in one day with a little lunchbox, and he's like, Yeah, Tara, you want to see all my Pokemon cards? And I was like, oh dear. Apparently, wow. yeah, he, he named a, a hippo... Oh, Hippopotas. Is it Pokemon? Because I guess they're they're just giving up on the names at this point. Hippopotas, whatever. What the well, fuck thanks. ever. Thanks, Linkara. That's pretty cool. <laughs> we can't. I really come... picked a terrible like spirit animal, didn't I? Yeah. A bit. It's fat and sweats blood and well, not real blood, but you know, red stuff. Like I did not pick a ladylike, graceful spirit animal you say that like it would fit you otherwise hey i'm a total fucking lady I knew that was coming uh, Actually, I'm probably closest to being part cat because left to my own devices i would totally like be up all night and sleep all day and just sit around and roll around in the sunny patch and you know a cat's lifestyle would suit me really And then well. just turn around for no reason and claw the shit out of someone. <laughs> I do that anyway. Yeah. That's why me and Bridget get along so well. We understand each other. We're simpatico. So are you ready for the bullshit this week? I had a week off from the bullshit. I am so ready. Okay. You say that. You shouldn't say that, but you do. Okay. Let's Let's get the intro going. Where is my intro? Where are you, intro? Where, where are you tonight? Why did you leave me? That's not the intro. I searched the world over and thought I found true love. You met another and you were gone. I take it you didn't have Hee Haw growing up. I mean, I'm sure we had it. We didn't watch it. He did. Oh, God, we did. Anyway. I, I do know about the kid who was fucking Hot Pockets. Everyone had to tell you. Each week, Catherine goes out on the worldwide interwebs, finds all sorts of horrible stuff. A segment we like to call, What the Fuck is Wrong With You? And I guess our first story is a little... Crazy kind of relevant to our times because you know money is tight for everybody these days you're fighting for every dollar you're trying to you know you work hard for the money and other song cliches um but you know there's a line stuff you stuff you would do for money and stuff you should probably you should think just think twice this guy in Oklahoma did not. And I'll give you the story here. Oklahoma man, come on screen, behave yourself. Oklahoma man retrieves $20 bill, gets stuck in drainage pipe for two days. A lot in Oklahoma. According to KSWO, a $20 bill dropped down a storm drain leads to a lot in man 
being stuck in the city's underground water drainage system for two days. Man told police he dropped the money into a stormwater drain. He said he had no choice but to go in after the lost money. No, you had a choice. You totally had a choice. You went down where Pennywise lived. <laughs> there was, there was a, there was not go after the money or go after the money. I mean, harsh, I, I can kind of see trying $20. Like if I dropped a dollar down a storm drain, I'd kind of be like, well, that sucks for me. But $20, it's a bit of a different story. But I don't think I would go far enough to fall in. Once underground, he lost his way, leaving him with little to do, but hoped someone would hear his calls for help. A group of high school students walking home from school through the intersection heard a strange voice coming from the manhole. That's the point I would be gone. And they were like, holy shit, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles are real. We are. I would, have, I would not be able to resist. We all float down here. Oh, are yes. We, are we sure we all about marketing for Michael Bay's Ninja Turtle movie? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> Excuse me, kids. Can you send out a pizza and some explosion? Oh. He was, he was not able to tell police anything about how or where he got into the city's underground water system, but city officials believe he, it had to be through a storm drain, and once inside, it's probable that he became disoriented and got turned around. I imagine the smell down there would be disorienting. City officials said the pipe the man was in had a 42-inch diameter, meaning he was forced to make his way by crawling. And here's the kicker. Despite all of his efforts, he never found the $20 bill searching for. That's tragedy. Two days! Two fucking days! Underground, crawling. For $20. You know like, what? Is, is it worth it? I would just say fuck it. I would get a bunch of aluminum cans and just, you know, recycle that shit and call it a day. Yeah. There's got to be a better way to make $20. Give, give give a hand job at a rest stop. That's better than being in a storm drain for a few weeks. <laughs> that's not good. That's not good advice, Tara. You know what? You're not telling the kids can crawl around a storm drain for two fucking days. <sighs> give a hand job. Who loses? That's not good advice. That's not... You know, I I well okay. I, I think it's lesser of the evils we're talking here. I totally understand what happened. He wanted to buy a single pack of cigarettes. Is that how much they cost now? They probably do. I've never, I've never actually smoked, so I don't know. After, after the reign of Emperor Bloomberg, who knows? <sighs> so, speaking of smoking, um, you know how everybody always says that pot people who smoke pot tend to be chill, and it's it's the one that chills you out. It's nobody ever started to fight pot, man. It just. Yeah, um, that's bullshit. Because, oh. uh... Was there only one bag of Doritos left? Reefer Badness teen torched mom's clothes after she refused to give him money to buy pot. Okay, well, he wasn't already on pot. He was pissed he couldn't get pot. He needed to chill. Meet John Carter. Anger... <laughs> It'd be funny, but no. Angered, he, doesn't like he's from Mars. he doesn't look like he's from Mars. He does. That is a neck beard. Gentlemen, it's don't John do. John Carter of neck beard. <laughs> Gentlemen, don't do this. Do not do this with your facial hair. Whatever you do, no. shave this. It's not. Don't do that. Angered that his money would not, his mother would not give him money to purchase marijuana. The Texas teenager allegedly retaliated by setting her clothes on fire. Inside the family's Houston apartment. Carter, 17, allegedly torched the garment Saturday morning, causing minor damage to their residence. Subsequent Pope determined that Carter was angry at his mother because she would not give him money so he could buy marijuana, so he started setting her clothes on fire. 
totally reasonable. I don't okay. understand. Response. No money for pot. Mom won't give me money for pot. How does burning clothes help this situation at all? You know what would help this situation? Get a job, motherfucker. Getting a job. Yes. Shave your neck beard and get a job. Also, is it just me or is he not wearing a shirt in the uh, in, in the mugshot? Well, maybe he took it off to burn it? It does not look like a shirt's being worn there. I just, it... No, I think he's wearing an orange shirt. It's just very close to his actual skin tone. Mm. I Why would, why in the... This is not going to accomplish your goal. Well, at that point, you're beyond accomplishing the goal, and you're straight on to revenge. You're all Daenerys Targaryen, fire and blood. Except if if you're really at a point where you're sitting around burning your mom's underwear because you, she won't give you money for pot, you really need to rethink your life. Yeah. That is, that is, that's what we call hitting bottom. That, that's got to be a come to Jesus moment. Yeah, because that... That's not one you put in the scrapbook. It really isn't. You know, it's not. You're not taking a selfie. Here's me with mom's nightgown on fire. You're not doing that. I don't know these damn kids today. Probably yeah, that's, that's true. Thing. Did you see there was one? There was a fighter pilot who took a selfie of himself in the jet while he was firing a fucking missile. That's a job you need to be fucking focused on. <laughs> It's love the selfies. Now there's a missing plane in Malaysia. Coincidence? <laughs> maybe. Holy shit, maybe. Oh. But seriously, I mean, it. it's... it's. You would think someone who was used to smoking pot would be a little bit more reasonable. Maybe they need the pot to be reasonable. Maybe it's like an Incredible Hulk Jekyll Hyde thing. Eh. You wouldn't like me when I'm not high. I'm looking at the channel here. Uh, pretty sure his mother's never letting him come home after that, HLD. Yeah, it's pretty much that. That's one of those things that, you know, once you set your mom's bloomers on fire, she's not going to be too happy about letting you come home. If your mom still wears bloomers, <laughs> I'm amazed you're aware of pot. Uh, so, okay, there are some things in in uh, grade school that we take with us throughout our whole life. We learn to share. We learn when it's nap time and when it's time to work. We learn... How to line up in straight lines. But some people take different lessons with them from uh, from their grade school experience. And this fellow in Seattle took probably th the one he probably shouldn't have taken with him. Um, man punches stranger in Capitol Hill for a bite of his burrito. Police arrested a very hungry... Isn't that a Subway commercial? <laughs> no. Police arrested a very hungry 24-year-old man in Capitol Hill on Sunday afternoon after an alleged assault on a man eating a burrito. A man was sitting outside of a restaurant eating a burrito at the intersection of Broadway and East Pine Street. I want to see how many times they could type eating a burrito into this story. When another man approached him, uh, Give me a bite of your burrito, the stranger reportedly said. The burrito eater told the man he was being rude, which only provoked him. The burrito seeker shoved the victim and repeatedly demanded a burrito bite. The victim stood up and was met by a punch in the head. The assailant ran away. Okay, now what happens when you do that in, in third grade is you get time out. You get detention. Did you ever have time out when you were, they had that room with, it was blacked out the windows and they made you sit there all day and do like busy work and shit. It was awful. I hated timeout. I never got a timeout. I wasn't raised by pansies. I got a good street yelling at no. by my old Irish farmer dad. No, I'm talking. The school, would. they had this room called the timeout room. And they'd send you there all fucking day if you were just being a little shit. 
So no, we just had like the principal's office. But and I was such a goody two shoes in school that like this is how much of a goody two shoes I was. I was the kid they sent to walk other bad kids to the principal's office to make sure they went. But so all. And I got very, very upset one day in kindergarten because there was one really bad kid in the class and I was always walking him to the principal's office and the teacher would always give the note for the principal with what he did to him. And for whatever reason, one day she handed the note to me instead. And so I arrived at the principal's office like in hysterics thinking that I was being sent to <laughs> I was very, very upset. He I didn't like, read oh, the note. Did he? Well, no, you don't read the note. That's not a note for you. And I was very upset thinking that I had gotten sent to the principal's office and, like, my academic career was over. And, like, I was literally crying. And the secretary's like, oh, my God, what's the matter, honey? And I'm like, oh, I got sent here. And she reads the note and she's like, no, you didn't. Go back to class. Well, you know, strange child. You do that in, you know, you do that in, in elementary school. It's a very different response to when you do that in real world because you do that when you're a grown up and run away they put you in time out it's called jail yeah but it's not as you know everybody yeah everybody has to watch you pee I think that's one of the biggest reasons I never will I will never the break the law. People do for fucking burritos because didn't we do a story about a grandfather who like abandoned abandoned the kid for a burrito are burritos that amazing? Like, I've had burritos, and I don't think I would abandon a child or assault a stranger over them. Am I not eating the right burritos? Annie T. Dear Burrito Biter, Surely it is better if you bite the burrito instead of beating the buyer of the burrito, and thus no bite of the burrito. Like, am I missing something? Is there some magic burrito secret of the universe? I don't know. I, I don't know. It's It's just... It, It's a burrito. Yeah. I. You know what? You can make a burrito in like 10 minutes. For like, th you go to the store, five bucks. You got all the shit you need to make a burrito. Like, it's not that fucking serious, man. How good so, was, was, was this? It's not very good, but you can go to Taco Bell and get a burrito for like two bucks. Was this an orgasm burrito or something? That's what I'm saying. Like, is there a thing that I'm missing out on here? Were there like magical orgasm burritos? I'm wearing a blush called orgasm. I wouldn't punch anybody in the head for it. It's the name of the color. Ah. Orgasm is a color now? Yes, it's supposed to give you like a dewy flush as though you've just had one. It's a really like wildly popular color. It sells like crazy. And it's really funny to hear like really uptight ladies try and buy it because they're like, I want the, the, the O blush. And you're like, Christ, it's a word. Just say it. It's okay. So our next one, um, I've, you know, I've gone, I understand people going a long way for their health. I mean, like out of the, my mom. When she got cancer, she did macrobiotics. She did special diet kind of stuff. Everything she could think of. And, you know, you get kind of desperate at those points. You, you go, so that's why this guy is a fucking asshole. Because not only is he playing on people's fears of illness, he's also doing it with their religion. And I hate this guy so much. This guy can, can just go fuck himself. Um, convicted felon. Doctor. He's both. Injects Oklahomans with, quote, Jesus shot. An Edmund doctor is under fire for allegedly injecting patients across Oklahoma with a mysterious formula called the Jesus shot. Dr. John Michael Lonergan is a former federal prison inmate who was convicted of tax evasion, mail fraud, and health care fraud. Lonergan is also known as Dr. Mike. Hi, Dr. Mike. Hi, everybody. 2005 State Medical Board of Ohio permanently revoked his medical license following his federal convictions. After his incarceration, the Oklahoma Medical Board voted to allow him to practice medicine in 2012 under state supervision. Wow, how did that work out? 
Recent emails sent to News 9's newsroom claim the doctors actively injecting people across the state with a mysterious formula called the Jesus Shot. Uh, receptionist at the Edmund Clinic answered questions in a recorded phone call with News 9. Why is it called the Jesus Shot? The clinic responded, I don't know why Lonergan calls it that. What's in it? You would have to sit down in a consultation. I don't know what the formula is. Um, it gets even worse. He's supposed to be yeah. under supervision. This is the person running the clinic. Um, her name is uh, Clinic Director Barbie Schrick. Um, when the news folks confronted her, she said, quote, I'm so glad you're telling me about this. Thank God for the news that investigates and finds things out for people. Thank you. That's got to be sarcasm, right? I hope so. Tell me that sarcasm. I want to... I want to believe that sarcasm and she was just being a huge bitch about her total failure to do her job. You have a convicted felon who is very limited in the scope of what he's able to do without you watching his shit. And apparently even the receptionist knows something, knows that there is a Jesus shot. That this Jesus guy is described as an injection that takes away pain for life. It costs $300. There's your first tip off. Nothing that takes away pain for life is going to cost $300. It's going to cost like 25 fucking grand. $300 takes away your pain. Why? Because Jesus. What's in it? Jesus. You're getting injected with some Jesus. That sounds way dirtier than they probably mean it. Yeah. Yeah. A hot Jesus injection. Wow, there's a title for this week. I mean, I suppose you could argue that a different kind of shot, when given in enough quantity, might take away pain for life. But a bottle of Cuervo doesn't cost $300 either. No. Unless it's really, really good Cuervo. Um, just... How? Did, did, did Obviously, he wasn't doing this in secret. Obviously, the other people in the clinic knew... It's probably fucking saline. Probably is, but that's some real damn expensive saline. He, he, he's a felon. Is, does Jesus just just by invoking Jesus, will you get people to do anything? Some people. It's like you know it. It. Hey, give me your parking spot. No, Jesus said so. Oh, okay. What would Jesus do? Well, Jesus didn't have a car. So... Jesus didn't well, charge people. You didn't see him go up Jesus, to the... Jesus didn't charge people to heal them, no. Jesus healed people for free. He didn't go up to the blind guy and go, Oh, man, that must suck. You got 20 bucks? Yeah, no. Didn't do that shit! Hey, Lazarus? Lazarus, yeah. We're going to work this out, but first, I need a down fucking payment, okay? Because it's resurrection talk shit. Talk to my dad about it. Yeah, talk Yeah, talk to my dad. We'll get this all worked out. So, as if we didn't have one big douchebag this week, we've got an even bigger one. ICE, the uh, immigration and, um, what is it? Immigration? What does it stand for now? I don't know. ICE is now our immigration service. It used to be, um, well, the Department of Immigration, but now it got, you know, copyright got put in there somehow, weirdly. Yeah. Um, now they want you to think they're gangster rap as turned actors. They're in charge of a whole lot of shit. They're in charge of, you know, obviously immigration and copyright and, and trademark and all that shit. But they're also, they are a law, a law enforcement division. Um, so they are given quite a bit of, of leeway and, and authority to handle shit. That's why this guy, oh, fuck this guy, fuck this guy with every fucking, cause yeah, I'm going to let you read that and digest it a second before I put it on the screen there, Tara. There you go. 
Immigration officer fired after putting wife on list of terrorists to stop her flying home. Immigration officer tried to rid himself of his wife by adding her name to a list of terrorist suspects. He uses access to security databases to include his wife on a watch list of people banned from boarding flights into Britain because of their presence in the country. It's not connected to public good. The result, the woman was unable to, uh, for three years to return from Pakistan after traveling the country to visit her family. The tampering, and this is, this is what, the tampering went undetected three years. Nobody realized this until the immigration officer was selected for promotion and his wife's name was found on a suspect's list during a vetting inquiry. But you know what that's called? That's called karma. Schadenfreude. Like, you got caught because you were up for a promotion. <laughs> and now you're fired because you're a horrible fucking human being. And this wasn't actually, this wasn't the U.S., I gotta stress. This was uh, the home office in the U.K., so this, this was a U.K. issue. But still, it's the same thing. They're trusted, just, I was giving you the ICE example so you understand how much authority and leeway they're given. They're trusted with a lot of this shit. So this guy decided that the best way to get rid of his wife was to just... This? Really, you just, you could not handle the divorce. You cheap wow. motherfucker. Yeah, that's expensive, and he might have to pay things, and... You cheap motherfucker. But what, what baffles me is three years this stood because of this guy. That's fucked up. Yeah. That's way too much power to be given to these motherfuckers, especially... Like he totally fucked up this woman's life. Yeah, and it's... it's Obviously, he was unaccountable until someone finally, someone else finally looked at what he was doing. Because he was up for a promotion. So, presumably, in this entire time, nobody was watching the shit he was doing. Well, I mean, if you have a certain amount of clearance, they can't, they, I'm sure they don't have the staffing to micromanage every decision. Well, they, if you have a certain level of clearance, you're entrusted to use it properly. Well, with this, it's, it's one of those things, with this kind of of you know authority you need some kind of oversight because otherwise abuse shit three fucking years well she's gonna clean up in the divorce now yeah oh yeah that's that oh yeah oh yeah fuck a baker's dozen of this guy oh yeah So, our last one tonight is um, as close to heartwarming as we get. <laughs> I love that look. Close, closer than a bear on a drunken rampage. Yeah, as as close. That was pretty heartwarming. Hemingway bear was pretty heartwarming. He, I miss. I, well, I miss, well the 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 drunken pig. I miss him too. Yeah, didn't he die? He died. Oh yeah, it was Hemingway pig, not Hemingway bear. But uh, this one, it's, it, I, I dare you to make less sense. I, I accept that challenge. Hey, kids, oh, kids, we got video, and you're going to wish we didn't. From Australia, closed caption television captures G-string clad thief parading in stolen Batman costume. And ladies and gentlemen, yes, yes, here it comes. We've got video. Let me let me cue this up here for you so that you can see the magnificence that is this fucking guy. If he's in a Batman costume, how do they know he's in a G-string? A bungling burglar has turned so Cape here, Crusader while robbing a second hand shop. Bring this up costume. here. Here we go. Here he is. Comic book villain. Would you fuck me? I'd fuck me. Oh. What? 
finding a box of No, I'm reading it and I get it now. Wow, that is a really anchor man looking anchor. He is, isn't he? But there yeah, there there he goes. And covering his nipples, I guess, or something. But there he goes. There he's, he's got the bat. Now he's he's gotten the Batman outfit. He has become the bat. He is the knight. That's. Uh, he's still covering. What is that? I don't know. What on a shirt, maybe? Bungling burner. Bungling burger, burglars turned cape crusade. Why are they showing Batman footage? Really? Really? Oh, we're done with you, news. We're done with you. Oh, my God. Would you fuck me? I'd fuck me. Um, police have charged the Batman wannabe who entered the store wearing only a G-string. Uh, after donning a Batman mask and cape, the near-nude man rifled through the store shelves before completing his outfit... Not with a utility belt, but with a bride-to-be sash. Obviously. Apparently unaware he's being recorded on closed-circuit television, the thief paraded around the shop's backyard his bizarre ensemble for around 40 minutes. And the person who owns the store, Michelle Rowe, she had a great, great quote. She actually said, he didn't look too bad in it either. He just wandered around like that at the scene of the crime? Now you have to wonder. She says, oh, he didn't know it was there. Maybe he did know that they were they were there. What was the goal here? <laughs> I don't know. Like, what was your end game? I don't know. 40 minutes. That's a long ass time to be to be good by horsing your way around. Yeah. <laughs> good by horsing around. There's a good title for this week. <laughs> Oh, that's my question. What was what was your goal? I don't know, but that's amazing. I find myself asking the kitten that all the time. <laughs> she gets herself stuck on like the headboard of my bed or something. Like, what's your goal here? What are you trying to accomplish? Mm -hmm. And she looks at me confused because she doesn't think that way. I suppose she's a kitten. The minute you walk out of the house in just a G-string, you're already on a bad road to start with. This is this is not going to end well. Well, I mean, it depends. You might make a lot of money. Just a G-string? Leaving the yeah. house? Nothing else? If, if, if you look good in just a G-string, make some cash. I, I don't... Just a G-string, $20 hand jobs. You're just full of helpful hints tonight, Tara. I, well, you know, but, because I am a raging success at life, I like to share. Somewhere along the line... I, don't, I don't, can't even understand the sequence of events that led to this. I don't... Nothing makes sense here. It's harmless... For once, it's just one of those strange things that happens, I think, because it must. It's completely one of those thousand monkeys typing for a thousand years kind of thing. Except in our case, it's, you know... If the monkeys type for long enough, they'll come up with a guy in a G-string in a Batman costume? Well, yeah, six billion talking monkeys. If you have six billion talking monkeys around for 600 million years, eventually, one of them is going to wear... A Batman costume and a G-string on in, in, in video. I don't feel like that's an inevitability. I think the story disagrees with you. I don't think that's going to show up on next week of Cosmos. <laughs> Carl, imagine Carl Sagan billions of years ago. Well, now it's Neil deGrasse Tyson. They just started a new version with Neil deGrasse Tyson. But I don't think he's going to talk about it either. You can email him. Maybe he will. Maybe maybe, maybe he just needs to know about it. Uh, okay, this one's a really, uh, really way out there when you have to be a comic geek to get this. Batman of Zurinar. Yeah, that. If you're a comic geek, you understand that. If you're not, well, you have a life. Um... Yeah. I had to go running to geekier friends than mine now. 
help piece together last week's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., which was really good, by the way. It's improving. Slowly. I just, I just wish they killed off the person that was imperiled. I no hate spoilers. Her. I hate, I hate her. I hate her. I hate her so much. Gotta go. I hate her. So yeah, I guess, I guess we learned this week that in this wild and crazy world, anything truly is possible. I, I mean, it's hopeful, you know. Because if, if all of our great grand existence can come together Wait. To have hang something up, hang the fuck <laughs> Hit the pause button. We've been doing this shit for what? Years now? <laughs> and this is the story you've chosen to give you hope. Yes! Damn right. This is the story you've chosen to cling to in a chaotic world. Because if this sleep at night. If this shit could happen, anything, literally anything is possible. Something is very wrong with you. Yeah. This, this gives you hope. Yes. Have, something's wrong. You're just now getting to that. You're just coming up on that mile marker, huh? No, it's a whole something new that's wrong with you that I hadn't discovered before. We learned a parfait of personal issues. We learned this week, with great power comes great responsibility to not get your wife stuck out of the on a terrorist list. Yeah, no. You Divorce is not to court. No. Some bitch needs to go to jail for that shit. And speaking of jail, we've learned that supervision means you have to pay attention, not just be cool with the weird shit. Yeah. If you have Gosh. a doc... Thank you, Press, for looking into this. Well, that was your job, so you're welcome. If if you have, honestly, if, if you have to... If you have a doctor who's invoking the Lord... Not in just saying, God bless you, but in, God will bless you with this shot. For $300. For $300, yeah. I wonder how Medicare was looking at that shit, you know? I mean, fuck, the Catholic Church is one of the most corrupt organizations in the world, and even they give out the Eucharist for free. You have to wonder, did, did, did it show up on the, on the insurance? Um, hmm. Say, Stan, do we pay for a Messiah intervention? No, no, okay. there, there, there's no, there's no deductible on. You're gonna have to pay all that. Sorry, we're not you, gonna. You think Medicare covers Jesus? Jesus is out of our network. Um. Oh, there's the new Republican Party line. Obamacare doesn't cover Jesus. <laughs> we learned this week that there are some th some lessons you can take through life from grade school, and some you gotta leave there. For example, you can't punch someone to get your way and expect it to be okay. No, I think that's a lesson you should take with you. Well, no. The, the, actually, the timeouts yeah. get harder as you go along. Yeah, the timeout. Yeah, they do. You'll never punch someone and take their lunch. They do. Um, we've learned that just because, you know, if you can't afford your poison of choice, such as it were, then perhaps you should look into employment and not into setting your mother's underwear on fire. I'm going to say that again. You, know, you get a job at Arby's, you can set frozen french fries on fire and they'll pay you. Well, not fire, burning oil. You don't want to be in that position. Setting, I mean, setting your mom's You under get a job at Burger King, you can flame boil hamburgers and they'll pay you. And then you can buy weed. And finally, we learned this week money's important, but not two days in a storm drain important. No. Prioritize. Sometimes you just got to say, let it go. It's a tax write-off. You know what you put down? Um, Not getting myself stuck in a storm drain. I'm sure there's a deductible for that shit. Because that smell ain't coming out anytime soon. What? The storm drain or the shame? Yes. 